Welcome back, everybody, to the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. This is episode 154, which uh, makes me happy every time I say that. Remember, if you have questions, send them to podcast at DanJohnUniversity.com. As always, I say this every week. I'll do my best to answer each and every one, even if I don't like the question, which can happen. Um, things are things are going well here on the on the Q and A. I've been really happy lately with the questions. I was in Chicago at Perform Better this last weekend, and a number of people came to me and said that they listen to my podcast while they go walking. So, uh, if you're out there walking, listening to my podcast, uh, I'm walking with you today. Okay, and enjoy. I'll do my best to make this interesting. Uh, let's start with the questions and let's take off. First question is from Nick. Now, Nick is going to ask a question that at a basic level uh, bothers me. And I'm going to answer the question, but I want you to know that uh, I'm not a big believer in early sports specialization. I don't like it. I think it hinders uh, the child. And like I've seen so often in my career, especially here in Utah, is that the kids burn out. So, but I'm going to answer the question with an asterisk that I worry about some of the stuff. But at the same time, uh, when I was 12 years old, I wish, I mean, I was lifting weights uh, by myself in the, in, in, on our back patio and it was wonderful. Uh, but let's get started. Nick asks, my question is regarding my son, Matthew. Matthew is 12 years old and loves football. I'm guessing American football here. He is coming up on his fourth year of playing. I started him last summer running a mile and doing body weight work three to five days a week. Well, I have to stop you right there. I don't, I don't see any value in running that mile. Uh, when I was in high school, they tested us with a mile and I ran 551 in football cleats after practice, which I still consider one of my one of the best things I ever did because uh, after football practice, uh, pulling up that different kind of conditioning is, is interesting. Um, so yeah, my story is about me. Uh, I used to run a lot of mileage getting ready for American football and the carryover was nil. Um, uh, football is, you know, place, you know, the reason we timed the 40 is because that one coach back in the day figured out that the punt goes about 40 yards so he was looking for uh who can get down the field fastest and that's the scientific reason we time 40s um i used to we used to joke playing football about how at the end of the season how we needed to get in shape for the next sport we're going to go out for because uh american football uh it, there is a kind of conditioning to it uh, you need armor uh you need to be able to take a hit and i think i've talked about that um, my last football game was played in the morning on Thanksgiving Day. And by the time we came around to Thanksgiving d dinner, I, I was stunned at how much my hands and my forearms hurt because generally we played games at night and I would sleep through that first level of pain. But armor building is probably more important. Appropriate speed training is more important. Uh, American football is one of the few sports where mass is important. So uh, before we even get started, I want you to you know think about that mile run. Uh, I certainly can see it. If, if you're going to tell me it's a, a tonic warm up or something like that, I'll agree with it. But uh, let's and then doing body weight uh, work three to five days a week, which is just fine. He plays offensive line and is interested in transitioning to tight end. Um, if he wants to play tight end, from my experience, um, I think wrestling is a great thing to do. I have a pretty good home gym following your one piece at a time approach. I have a few barbells, plates, dumbbells, kettlebells, trap bar, pull-up bar, TRX, and sled. What kind of training program would you have them do for the next two months before football starts? Well, two months isn't a lot of time. Um, one of the things uh, that, that, I mean, I always recommend about eight weeks before the season, uh, I checked that, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, about 16 weeks before the season uh, is Mass Made Simple so that you have, after that six or seven weeks that you do it, you have uh, you have plenty of time to uh, get the bodies, uh, kind of like the, the speed and agility you lock back down. When you put a lot of mass on, it's hard for a few weeks to, to have the same timing and, you know, like change of direction, all those little things. That 
it's weird to say this, but it, 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 you, you become a bit of a bull in a china shop, uh, to be cliched as possible. Um, so obviously not, uh, obviously not something like a mass building program, but two months before the season, that's when I would focus on sprints, uh, change of direction work, uh, actually uh, wrestling, physical skills, uh, armor building stuff, you know, hitting the ground and getting back up. Uh, any kind of ground work is good. It could be as simple as bear crawls or, uh, or all that. There's a, there's a whole bunch of new crawls that people have been inventing almost by the day. But I still, I'm a big fan of bear crawls and I do like the butt down bear crawls versus what you usually see. Um, if you're going to have a child lift at 12, you really want to teach them the basics. They should learn calisthenics. They should learn the basics of obstacle course work, uh, you know, climbing over things, monkey bars, uh, that little balance beam thing where you, you know, you run through. They should play as many games as they possibly can. It would be nice. Uh, a, a good thing would to be this to, I mean, I would go to a local high school and hire a sprint coach to, to teach him the basics of, appropriate sprint technique. Um, some of the drills we teach now uh, are far better than the conditioning crap we used to do. Um, over there on DJU, uh, we have a program called the Southwood program. South Wood, one, one word. Uh, we also have Mass Made Simple, um, though I, I do think you should read the book. Uh, <laughs> of course, what a, what a crazy thing to happen. An author recommends reading his own book. Wow, has that ever happened before? Um, so there's there's a there's a lot you can do. The, the biggest thing is that he, you know, I don't know what 12, 12 year old would mean anymore. When I was young, twelve was probably going into the seventh eighth grade. Of course, nowadays the way parents hold their kids back, what is he, a first grader? Uh, I, I always love it when parents hold their kids back and then wonder why they can't make it to the next level. Well, your your child's been two years older than everybody, and of course he's dominated sports. He's two years older, you know, but. So in my own personal case, um, which which is you know I was uh, I was the youngest kid in the class. I was undersized in high school. Uh, I did my best to show up in uh, uh, and fall in the best shape I could. I tried to do my best in all the tests we had back in the day. We ran a mile. We ran a forty. Uh, we had a pull up test. We had a bench press for five tests, and I, I think there was one more. No, nothing like a jill or anything. So I just tried to max out those tests as best as I could. Um, at my high school, we did a lot of circuit training and uh, the Southwood program, uh, the 864 Power Clean Military Front Squat Bench Press program, and that all worked well. So you have a 12-year-old son, you want him to get in shape in two months for football. I would suggest the best thing you can do, of course, would be improve sprint technique, uh, do some groundwork, uh, bear crawls, uh, combining bear crawls with sprints is a marvelous way to prepare for football, uh, hill sprints, stadium steps, uh, football is a running game and then you turn yourself into a torpedo. So, um, anything that builds up tension would be good. And in the future downstream, I think there'd be value in thinking about programs like Mass Made Simple. Yeah, I hope that helps. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Alex, though. There's a lot here I want you to listen to, gentle listener, because uh, there's there's some value here. For the past 64 workouts, thank you, Alex. Did you hear what he just said? 64 workouts. I did what I call office easy straight. Uh, he works at Dunder Mifflin, and that's why this works so well. With three kettlebells five days a week, which takes me nine to 13 minutes. I detailed it on the form, but a quick, a quick form, uh, okay, he's over on Dan John University, and it's a really nice little program. But a quick summary is that I'm 44, 6'1", 200 pounds, 90 kilos-ish for my international listeners, have two small kids and prefer routine over variety, have an extensive injury history from Ironmans and CrossFit. Wow, what a shock. And you have to, you often have to wait for equipment at the campus gym so I needed to come up with something that worked for me. I got great results. After 32 workouts, I did a test, and my rack deadlift went from 275 to 345 for five reps. Uh, that's, 
That's pretty good, man. And I've had no injuries, niggles, or setbacks, which is unprecedented for me. Yeah, anytime you put that, uh, are we sneaking up on, that's a third uh, improvement? At least, right? Is that about a third? Uh, that's outstanding. We're sneaking up on it anyway. Now for the summer quarters approaching, I have an opportunity to consistently use the quiet gym two days a week for 11 of the next 14 weeks. I've used the workout generator in the past and it's fine, though I rarely was assigned any big moves where I could use significant weight. Basically a two-legged deadlift or squat with a barbell. Feel free to reach out and slap me for trying to fix what ain't broken, but I get the impression from your work that a modicum of variety in training throughout the year is as good as sometimes lifting heavy weights. For the summer, do you think I should do my office easy strength, the workout generator, so these, he's giving me options. My office easy strength, uh, audience, yay. The workout generator as he is, yay. The workout generator, but add two sets of either front squats or deadlifts each day. Hmm. A bus bench program like the transformation program. Well, well here, here's, here's the thing. You've just given me four excellent options, but I like what you said. You feel like you need a little bit of, uh, of heavier loads. Then this is why I think so many people like the workout generator. But it, in defense, and I, uh, Alex, in, in defense of the program, um, listen, the workout generator is great, but don't forget when you get, so, okay, so you plug in, what equipment do you have? How many days a week, the intensity and all that. But don't forget when the workout generator spits out the workout, you can also scroll up and down to make the exercises harder. An idea for you this summer was is for you to try, uh, if let's just say you're working out three days a week and let's arbitrarily say that Monday and Friday will be the front squat and deadlift days, uh, that'll be, which which will be hard deadlifts. But honestly, if you're doing three sets of eight in the front squat, three sets of eight in an appropriate deadlift variation, that's not gonna be a bad workout. I would suggest sticking with the workout generator because you had good success with it. You're on the forum. Uh, if something bad comes up, uh, if something bad does come up, you know, you, you, you instantly can ping me or the rest of us and you're gonna get a lot more you're gonna get a lot more advice than just from me <laughs> a lot more uh, so i i like the idea let's do me do me a favor though i stay with those boring three sets of 10 three sets of uh, three sets of eight three sets of 10 three sets of 12 numbers and give that at least three weeks if not six weeks okay uh and the reason i'm saying that is um with your history of injuries and, and, and the situation, I think kind of kind of lubricating your joints, lubricating your movement pattern is gonna have great value because if this works, I want you to come back and do it again. Um, now on bus bench programs, I mean, like you mentioned the transformation program, we did that to get our athletes who have been playing American football to get ready for track and field. And that's why we call it transformation. But at the same time, we step back and we notice, and this is the feedback directly from the athletes, it was easy to note the body composition changes. It was, you know, visually, everyone everyone saw that. But what I liked about it was pe were the feedback of, boy, I feel better. My joints feel good. I, I'm, And the enthusiasm for the upcoming track season is what made me think, yeah, this is a winter program. The other bus bench programs, um, and for those who knew, a park bench program, a bench is a bench is a bench. If it's in a park, you have no expectations. But if you put it at a bus stop, you expect the bus to come. So a bus bench program is when you expect results. Um, with your background, I would say we maybe should avoid bus bench for a little while until all those little injuries kind of clear up, your techniques are solid, and then move on. I mean... Like I say about Mass Made Simple, I've had, I've had people become a bit unrecognizable in six to seven weeks um, with the transformation program, you know, and two rounds of it. People are asking me, why do we ever do anything else? So these are good programs and I'm proud of them. So basically, Alex asked a question a lot of us ask. Uh, 
he said, I've been doing this idea, my progress, he increased his deadlift almost by a third by just doing a very simple, uh, easy strength workout generator from Dan John University program. His numbers all went up, he felt, feels great, now he wants to do more. I understand why you want to do more. There's two sides to this answer. One, why aren't you sticking with what's working? But the more important answer is, every so often we do have to change things up, make things harder, so that you have an opportunity to, you know, to get new adaptions. So my recommendation for him is to, two days a week, add the front squat, add a deadlift variation to the workout generator, and let's see how the things go, okay? Jim has a fun question, and it's about an old article I have called Sleepless in Seattle. If you type in Dan John, Sleepless in Seattle, you get my standards uh, for most people. Uh, I was at a workshop this weekend, and someone gave me credit, which was amazing, for their the way they put their standards together. Uh, their standards have a lot more math than my standards, and uh, as everybody knows, uh, I always think math fails us in the weight room. I do. Uh, that's a conversation for another time. In regards to the standards put forth, put forth in your Sleepless in Seattle article, I had a question regarding progression through the standards. Can you use the previous level as a means of attaining the next? An example to clarify. In the pull standards, I'm currently at 1, holding a bat wing for 10 seconds with 16K. But I'm unable to compete level 2, 20 TRX rows, suspension trainer rows. Aside from or along with the with the suspension trainer row, would working on the bat wing be useful? Yeah, I, Jim, especially if you're male and you're struggling with pull-ups. Now, I don't know anything about your former training, your former programming, but many men who come from a push-up, bench press background, the office work where they live like this or whatever, when they start doing pull-ups, they find that major gap where you're just simply bringing your shoulder blades together. Uh, it, I know it sounds strange as I do it, but a lot of men struggle with that because um, I wrote that article, Wake Up Your Rhomboids or something like that. Uh, it's my belief that a lot of men have um, really, I, 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 I literally don't like where my answer is going. Uh, I don't like this whole idea that you have to slap a muscle or wake it up or anything. But I will say in two cases, I think it's true. The glute and the rhomboids. Uh, if you're glute, if you have gluteal amnesia, you you got to work to bring it back. And if you have rhomboid amnesia, you got to work to get it back. So simple answer. Yes, I would continue to do the bat wings. Um, for example, doing it for sets, increasing load, increasing hold time. Um, well, it would always be load and time because it is an isometric. Adding more sets isn't going to really help that much. You know, if you know if you decide to go heavy, uh, which would be a fun little test, by the way. How you know you're doing the 16s for 10 seconds? I mean, how how long can you hold the 24s? Well, if you can hold the 24s for 10 seconds, then that's an interesting insight. If you can't even get the 24s, your thumbs can't even get close to your armpits. Um, maybe we need to look in other directions with physical therapy or chiropractor or something like that. Maybe there's a, a, a and I'm, oh, by the way, I'm now out of my lane, but I was going to say there might be an impingement. There might be a, an injury that's been going around for a long time. Uh, you might have a, an issue, uh, a, a genetic issue. Um, if you just can't get your thumbs in those armpits and sometimes that's the easiest way to fix that. Um, he, he asked basically, do you have any insights? Yeah, so my insight is this. If you can't do those those 20 suspension rows, you know, the bat wings are going to help, but also doing, um, I would say this, don't ever go to failure on those TRX rows or the bar horizontal rows. You know, always stop a rep or two early because I tell you, it's not as bad for... Uh, middle-aged pull-up syndrome on the elbows as pull-ups, but it has that same issue where your elbows get stuck out there by themselves, uh, and that seems to make a lot of people's elbows bite. So Jim's good question was this. 
uh, he's doing the sleepless in uh, Seattle standards and he got stuck on the pole, which is very common for North American males. And he wants to know if he should keep doing the earlier movements to build up the later movements. And my answer is absolutely yes. Keep doing the bat wings, keep doing the TRX rows, keep doing the hangs and build up the whole pull system to help support that issue. With many North American males, this is the problem they have. And this is what we call the flat tire in their training. Thank you, Jim. Good question. We have a question from Vahid. I saw in one of your comments that you're not a big fan of single arm swings. Then he goes on to say snatches. That's not true. Vahid, I'm a big fan of single arm swings. Uh, pardon me, snatches. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the, the kettlebell snatch, even the dumbbell snatch, is one of the most interesting uh, conditioning exercises I've ever been around. Uh, I hope you don't think, I mean, it, now, what could have happened is you might not have listened, and I make that mistake a lot where I say swing and snatch and I interchange them uh, because I am answering questions free form here. But I'm a big fan of one-arm snatches. Yes, kettlebell snatches, dumbbell snatches, yes. Swings, not so much because if they're done poorly, and most people do them poorly, I think they put a lot of stress on things that break easy. And what breaks easy? Well, all you got to do is walk with me around a typical American mall, shopping center, amusement park, and and then you just point to me the people that you think, I mean, every find the people that you think just by looking that single arm swings would be appropriate uh, for their uh, needs. Um, and what you'll notice is very few people fit the model of people who can hang, handle single arm swings. Um, <laughs> I, it's, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just, I'm just being as honest as I can. I like these movements personally, and that's great. And then do them and, and, and do them all you want. I never said, not one time, you should not do single arm sw uh, swings. I just say, globally, most people shouldn't. And then, of course, everybody, because, you know, uh, this is all an experience of one, you know, uh, it's, it is interesting that the same generation I grew up with, uh, the boomers were called the me generation. And everybody hates boomers now, but everyone's put the mantle of me on their shoulders. Uh, I like these movements. But I'm concerned I might be hurting myself without knowing it. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, what's my reasoning? Anytime you have an asymmetric ballistic movement, you'd better have your technique locked down. Number two, you'd better have your mobility and your general structure uh, in a very good place. Uh, if you've been in an auto accident, if you've played a collision sport, and even if I, as I sit here today on this chair, that's not the best, you know, I can feel, <laughs> as I'm talking, uh, I can actually feel my, my left uh, spinal rector getting angry at this question. And I'm, I'm starting to squirm around in my chair. Uh, I'm, it's not that I'm against it, nor do I hate it. Uh, I just have, in my experience, seen so many people swing so poorly. I believe that the chin sternum and zipper line should all be in a straight line the entire time you do those swings. No twisting or turning. And yet there's a whole school of kettlebell instruction that teaches this massive turn like this. And uh, of course, you know, I'm against lunges. And my good friend Stu McGill is telling me about this new injury called split pel pelvis that is coming from these personal trainers insisting on all these, all these massive lunges and all these variations that break the pelvis. Again, I, when a personal trainer is injuring you with an idiotic exercise, I, it makes me stop and think, what are we doing? Um, I figured out early, uh, well before I started working with professional athletes, that the single arm swing was difficult. Uh, I get all the benefits of swinging out of two-handed swings or double kettlebell swings. Um, you know, if you want to do unilateral stuff, we snatch because it just seems uh, a little safer. The load is less. Now, the ballistic hit is through the roof sometimes if done correctly. 
but this is my experience and I don't think here's the thing I've never had someone come and say you're right Danny single arm uh, swings have destroyed my clients I have had people tell me yeah I got hurt doing heavy turkey get up and I almost the one person we had here at the gym who uh, hurt himself very badly very badly on a, on a heavy Turkish uh, get up on a miss uh, hit his rib cage uh, and of course my brother Phil died from his a broken rib hitting his uh, liver so I am very how close was this person breaking a rib and hitting their liver I mean you really have to I mean is is a heavy Turkish get up worth dying for I don't think so but you know it, I don't know why people ask me this question because it's like doing the double overhead snatch, kettlebell snatch. I don't like it. I think it's dangerous. But people keep asking these questions, and I, I don't know how to explain it well enough. If we were to add up on our questions, uh, this might be the 40th time on my podcast that I've answered this, this kind of question, and I'm always amazed. Um, if you like it, do it. I, I, I'm not in, you're not in my gym. Uh, I, I, I don't recognize your name. I, I, you're not my neighbor. You're not one of my athletes. Do, do what you want to do. Having said that, I'm also giving you that little warning. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's a, a Danny alert on your phone. But I think possibly there's injuries. And here's the problem with the single arm uh, swing injury. Is you might not get hurt doing the swing, single arm swings. You might get hurt getting out of your car but you've already ramped up that lower back. You know, one of the worst injuries in my life, uh, I only found out about it when I got out of the car and I felt uh, a part of my body pop very loudly. I don't know why getting out of the car is so dangerous, but it seems to exacerbate a lot of people's lower back issues. So I I'm, I'm done. I hope that helped. Thank you. Jacob has a question. What is your opinion or experience with grip training, especially with grippers? Due to long COVID, lasting longer than half a year, I periodically can train only with grippers. I was practicing setting up the grippers like grip sportmen, slowly raising the volume using my heavy grips 150 gripper. After more than three months, I've tested my hang on a bar. Uh, bear in mind that I'm 168 uh, He's 168 uh, centimeters, about this tall, and 100K, 220, 32 year old guy. I managed to hang one minute with quite strict form, resembling ho ho hollow body. Last time I was really hanging from the bar before COVID in December, and I ma and managed a few months of training to last one minute and 20 seconds. You know, uh, grip strength is an odd duck, isn't it? Um, so the problem with grip strength, and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, is if you ever look at Homoculus Man, he's that uh, weird looking dude you see in uh, physiology books, who's got the huge eyes, the, the huge hands and the huge feet. Uh, and it shows uh, how many, how tied in the nervous system is. Well, grip is a massive brain. You get a lot of insights about how your brain is going by your grip. Uh, back when I was young, uh, in fact, uh, probably the one of the first things I became famous for online was called the tap test. And you can even get these now. I should have patented it or something like that. But um, the Soviets told the Swedes that every morning you take a pencil and you tap a piece of paper as many times as you can and then you count. Well, you know, with modern computers, uh, my friend Mike Rosenberg asked a friend of his so, to, to make this. So you you tap the space bar as fast as you could for 10 seconds. Now, of course, it's the internet, so you guys are a bunch of idiots. So, of course, this became, the, we gave away the tap test for free, and people started training the tap test. And, of course, the moment you train a test, you've ruined the insight. And the insight, brilliantly, was this. Is my, if my normal tap test is, 80. That's basically day in, day out, I'm at 80. And then today I'm at 64. Well, th that would stop me and make me go, okay, what's going on? Uh, it's like uh, my resting pulse rate in the morning is 58. 
Um, and if I wake up and my resting heart rate is 85, uh, I should sit back uh, in bed for just a moment and then do a check-in. What's going on out there? Now, if this morning I have, the, <laughs> my lawyer has called me in, uh, you know, to go talk to the FBI, yeah, my, my heart rate's going to be a little high and I know why. If, uh, I don't know, I wake up and the house is on fire, well, that's why my heart rate is a little high. Um, what we use the tapper for was to figure out uh, where, you know, where, in a very limited way to see where our central nervous system was. And again, it was, I, ne I never like a test to be isolated and then have it tell you. Once I use a test like that, then you might use your journal, you might use your diary, you might actually ask someone who cares about you what's going on. And the person who cares about you might look in the eye and say, You've been a total asshole for, you know, two weeks. You know, you're overtrading. You're, you know, you're drinking too much. You're, you're not sleeping enough. And you'd be like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's usually pretty obvious. Um, I am interested that with, with all the pulls, you can only uh, last a minute and 20. Um, with all the, with all the hangs, you only last a minute and 20. Uh, that's, I mean, that's fine. There's, that, that's fine. That's, but um, for someone who's 32, it would expect more. This, I'm not challenging you globally. I'm just saying you should. For me, uh, one of the best things that I've ever done for my grip is, of course, kettlebell swings. Uh, I think when you hit it correctly forward like that, holding on to that, biting into it, and throwing it back at yourself, that's the kind of grip I need for most of my sports. Um, I noticed when I started doing, uh, when I first started doing fat bar weightlifting, um, Mike Rosenberg again sent me out uh, some thick bars and I did farmer walks with thick bars and I also did deadlifts with thick bars and I was still at the time playing um, uh, American football and I can remember first off when I'd go to catch the ball I was able to catch the ball with one hand uh, you know one time I'm running across the middle and the ball's way out front and I just stabbed it stabbed my hand out and caught it and then when <laughs> When people would try to grab, uh, you know, try to hold me, I would just grab their hand and tug. And I, my grip was like iron. So I'm giving you two ideas here, if you can. Uh, 10,000 kettlebell swing challenge, grip bars, and let's see how those help your bar hang. And one other big secret to help the bar hang, hold on, folks, hang from the bar. I think I do it every day, every day. I mean, every single day I, I bar hang. Um, so we had a question from Jacob. Basically, he because of COVID, all he did was grips. Uh, he noticed that his hang uh, dropped off a little bit. And I'm a big fan of kettlebell swings to increase your grip strength. I'm a big fan of thick bars to increase your grip strength. And, of course, the test he used to test his hang the grip is uh, the, the hang is a gr great way to develop your grip and remember when you're hanging don't just do it this way do it chin-up style do it parallel if you can and if you can do thick bar or rolling bars if you really want to find out how <laughs> pathetically weak you actually are thank you great question Jacob. evan asks a question I am currently halfway through my first round of easy strength for fat loss. I'm not a very detail-oriented person, but I am trying to take detailed notes on my workouts so I can evaluate progress at the end of this round. You know, I've been keeping my journal, and this isn't me patting myself on the back, but I, I just did, since 1971. And I tell you something, I find that having a detailed journal is either and it's kind of issue, it's it's a you it's either the best thing to come back and look at or it's the worst thing there's no middle um when i go back sometimes and i looked at my really detailed journal entries the really deep like this is from 91 i think um i i get a sense of why things work and why things don't when i have a very more vague today i did this work much more uh diary -ish kind of workout journal I often pick up the little things that are falling apart in my in my life in my training. You know, I haven't felt well for five days. You know, I I think you know, and I you know, I I write out my whole day. 
when I come back five years later, I look at it knowing what's going to happen, being like, dude, you were telling yourself what's going to happen, okay? Um, but I, I am glad you're doing this. So I can evaluate progress at the end of this round. I started to think about the idea of using the armor building complex in a round of easy strength. And I'm curious to hear your initial thoughts about this. Okay. I do plan to go ahead and try it out so I can provide you feedback on it. But before I start, I wanted you to know how you might advise me on the daily amount of reps and any complimentary exercises. Would I be covering my basis if I just did the ABC and pull-ups? Um, you would, but you wouldn't survive. Yeah. Well, or would you advise a different pairing to complement the ABC? Okay. So basically one thing, I, I don't want to brag too much. Again, this is the second time I patted myself on the back, but when I started easy strength for fat loss, I weighed 260 pounds, just over 115 K, uh, with no real craziness. Uh, I went from 260 to 218. Now, I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, you know, when you're my age, which is 65, you know, your body is just so wired up to increase lean body mass. Okay, that was a joke, folks. Uh, 65 is a tough time to, to do a fat loss or a hypertrophy program. Um, what I'm trying to tell you is that easy strength for fat loss, as written, is designed to nudge your body fat levels down, which I think is the only appropriate way of losing body fat. Uh, I've got all the books of uh, Clarence Bass right here, and I've read them several times. I've emailed Clarence. We've had these great conversations. He has a very nice little thing he says about me on, on his website, and it means a lot. But he's the one that will tell you, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get to half a pound to a pound a month. So what I'm trying to say here, easy strength for fat loss is designed to do a very specific thing in, in a, I don't want to get full, too full of myself this morning, but in a, in a fairly intelligent way, because I've asked the best and brightest how to do it. Uh, the walking is probably the most important. You know, you, you you fast, you drink coffee, you do a very simple workout, you go for a walk. When you get home from the walk, um, you eat protein and vegetable, vegetables as appropriate. And you try to have another protein and vegetables meal later in the day and eat some fiber, eat some fermented food and get a lot of sleep. Okay, I just summarized the whole book, you don't have to read it. Uh, the, the whole course is completely free at DJU if you want the details. Some of the details in there that maybe don't make sense are, I sip on hot water throughout the day now, uh, whether it's you know just BS or not, I don't know, but it works for me. Um, getting back to your question, I only recommend the armor building complex. Kettlebells, double kettlebells, two cleans, one press, three front squats, as many rounds as you can. Uh, week one, I recommend doing it on Monday and Friday. Week two, I recommend it on Wednesday. So, if I were you, I would stick to that template, Evan. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And also vary the number of, um, however you do it, circuits, loops, whatever. Um, maybe the first time you do it, uh, I mean, do 13 rounds. The next time, do eight. Another time, do five. Another time, do 21. Build up to 34. Uh, maybe once a year, do something like 55 rounds of it. Uh, those are all Fibonacci numbers. Uh, if you want to use other numbers, that's fine. But stagger the number of rounds you do a little bit. And I would make it a little bit, I think the word in music is staccato, where it's kind of, there's no real, uh, it's, it's, there's some big variations. Um, what Maldebron called wild variations. Uh, I think that's better. I think it's better to have like on, on the Monday workout really long and on the Friday workout shockingly short. The following Wednesday, somewhere in the middle. There you go, do that. <laughs> just do, do do what I just said there. Um, so Evan has been getting 
great progress doing easy strength for fat loss. He wants to turn to make the armor building complex two cleans, one press, three front squats, plus pull-ups, his major workout. I'm recommending that he do it uh, Monday and Friday one week, Wednesday the other, uh, and have some variation if he adds it. But he's adding it, and if your wheels start to fall off, your joints start to hurt, then that indicates to me that maybe it's once a week. If your joints start to hurt, <laughs> your wheels are falling off, slide to once every two weeks. And then after that, of course, if things don't get better, slide that thing right out of your program. Thanks. Good question. Thank you. We have a question from John. Beautiful name. Background. I am a student at the Royal Military College of Canada, RMC. I train and compete in judo at the college. I have been doing Mass Made Simple Light with a friend who is new to weightlifting. The plan has been great because of its repetitive nature. Yeah, and I don't know why anyone would ever have a weightlifting program that didn't repeat everything basically all the time. Focusing on just a, key move, a few key movements has been awesome. We have stayed very active with hikes, grappling, and other sports, which I know goes against the laws of gaining mass, but the summertime is too appealing. And again, I mean, if, and if you're going to be in the Royal Military College, you better be doing some other stuff too, besides just looking good for the beach. Um, it was a real issue when I first started working with the military. <laughs> These guys were bodybuilding and jogging. But that is not a way. Uh, I, I know they use all these silly names now, but that, that's, that is not a way to prepare you for the task of what you're being called to do. He is less experienced in simply training to look good, feel good, and pass the RMC fitness test. Of course, look good again. I, I am just a bit more experienced in looking to compete uh, in the sport of judo. Question, what do we do next? Can we do uh, a same similar program? Yeah, well, guess what? I have a program called Mass Made Simple. Uh, it's on Dan John University. The book is also available. Uh, be sure to, and I, it's so cheap on PDF now on Amazon. I don't know why you wouldn't buy it. Someone told me it was on sale again. It's like, I wish they put quit putting my books on sale because I don't, I mean, I think I get a like a dollar when it's bought full price. And I, so when they put it on sale, I'm kidding. Um, but Mass Made Simple, the book, and, and the six, seven week program is, it, it is game changing, man. Uh, it, it's that, it's the, it's that workout where six or seven weeks after, if you haven't seen somebody, they'll look at you when you walk in the room, like, uh, what, what have you been doing? You know, um, mass made simple. Um, uh, even now my former students, um, who, <laughs> how do we say this nicely? They were the guinea pigs will get back to me and say, do you remember that one program we did? And I got so big. And they'll, they'll sort of, what's interesting is they'll, they'll remember the high rep squats and they'll remember the complexes, but they don't remember like what the complexes were or the high rep squats. Oddly, they'll remember the one hand bench, uh, the one arm uh, military presses and bench press really well because the numbers were so simple. Basically it's two, three, five, two, three, five, that kind of thing. Uh, and of course, I expect you to do bird dogs and a few other things every day just to make sure you're you're not losing all those other qualities. But I got to tell you, Mass Made Simple is something you might want to think. Uh, you said this, we want to keep workouts focused on building strength at about three days a week. Um, yeah, uh, you're, I'm going to ask you to squat your body weight for 50 reps at the end of this thing. Uh, so, you know, if you're 100 kilos, I expect you to you know squat 100K for 50 reps. Uh, it's a tough program. Uh, obviously, there's other programs. Um, really, uh, from it, for, if you guys are actually training to pass some fitness tests, uh, the program I have, like the transformation program and some of the others, are, are probably going to work in concert with testing those. So if you have to do a two-mile run, you need to practice running two miles. I mean, you have to you have to run. If they have a sit up test, you have to have sit ups. My knock on these tests, and well, it's not a knock, but um, you 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 truly have to test. You have to train to the test. I don't know what your test is, so in a sense, I got two things, and they're gonna be they're gonna be completely opposing. So get ready. 
mass made simples can make you look good and won't make you feel good while you're doing it, but make you feel good when you're done. Uh, you will work your lower body hard. However, you're also training for this test, so you have to train for the test. Putting on 15 kilos of body mass is going to really hurt your pull up. <laughs> Sorry, but true. Um, it might actually help your, your push up, which is weird, and that's just the way the world works. Um, probably what the sit up is a train thing, and depending on what kind of sit up you have, it's usually just a waste of time. Um, like if you have to run a three mile thing, you know, putting on a lot of body mass is going to impact it. But if you have to do a medicine ball throw, it's going to help. So look at Mass Made Simple. Look at your fitness test you have to do and figure out how long you have. If you have, say, four months before you have to do this test, I get Mass Made Simple done as fast as I can, add that new, that, that new lean body mass, and then explore uh, uh, all the ways you can do as best you can on the test. Thank you. We had a question about doing Mass Made Simple Light. Uh, I encourage people always to do Mass Made Simple Light's a good program. Mass Made Simple, uh, the actual program is better, but Mass Made Simple can be done for a long time. Um, this particular person is also training for a standardized test. So if you have enough time, the six or seven week Mass Made Simple always is good for males almost in everything we do. And then if you have enough time, so, but then after that seven weeks, it's time to start looking at how to pass that test. Um, this is the hardest part, keeping the balance of things. I hope that helps. Well, there you go. Another podcast in the books. Uh, I'm Dan John. Remember, if you have questions, send them to podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I do my best to answer each and every question. I feel like a lot of the questions spin around some similar ideas. Uh, there are some questions I don't like to answer, but I still answer them uh, as best I can. Um, and of course, until next time, let's all keep on lifting and learning, and I'll be here to help you. Thanks so much.